Hello, how are you fine folks doing? We are back with the second episode of our 2D game tutorial. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at some of the player movement controls and also cleaning up a few things as well. Now, hopefully this will be quite a quick episode because we're actually going to be doing a fair bit of copy and pasting today. So it should be a little bit easier. And believe it or not, uh, copy and pasting is an important aspect of programming. All about that copy and paste. Uh, now, we'll be explaining it, of course, as we go along. Uh, so hopefully it will make a bit of sense. Now, obviously, the first thing you may notice here is we've added to the map a little bit since the last episode. And I've also moved the base plate just so it looks a bit more like a finished game. But yeah, anyway, into today's episode. So the movement controls, we can still move forwards and backwards, which obviously we don't want. If I run off, yeah, straight off the map, that's not great. Now, obviously, I could add an invisible wall there, but that's not really going to solve my problem either. So if we go ahead and we see we've got this camera script here, remember when we did that, we replaced the default camera script with our own. Now, if we play the game again, you'll notice when I load in, in and I look in starter player, starter player scripts, uh, there's a bunch of other default scripts as well. And there's also a control script. Now, if we go ahead and we copy that, stop the game, and we're going to put that in and paste it into start player script. Now we're back inside our uh, studio environment. And we can look inside here. We see we've got a, some module scripts down here, a master control, and all these other different control schemes. You've got VR, you've got uh, game pads, all kinds of things. But if we look inside master control, and we scroll down a bit, let's see if I can find it. Uh, line, yeah, here we go, line 145. You see there's this function and it takes an X, a Y and a Z value. Now, we of course are moving in all three directions. So it's the Z value that we don't want. So if we just replace these two here, move value plus Z dot Z plus player move vector dot Z. If we just type in zero here and I go ahead and play, you'll notice straight away now, I can no longer move forwards and backwards. I'm pressing the W and S key here and nothing is gonna happen whatsoever because although these scripts are still receiving that input, they're not actually being processed anymore by that one line here that we just edited. So if that's all you want to do, then congratulations, the video's already over for you. But obviously there is another way of doing this because it's not exactly great to be having all these scripts in here that we might not necessarily understand and Roblox could, might change them in the future, they might break and we might not want to maintain all of this all together. We might want something a bit more simple. So what we could also do is we could just delete all of this. We could go in the control script, select all, delete all of that as well. Now obviously we have replaced the default and we've just got a blank one now, just like with the camera. So if we went in and played now, we'll see that we uh, can't even move the player around at all. So how about we go and write our own script? Now what we could actually do is we could pinch something off the wiki here. You'll notice there is this page called Side Scrolling Camera View. And it has some stuff on how to move a camera. Uh, it's a little bit similar to our own, but I think ours is superior. And it also has one on um, controlling the player. And we can be a bit cheeky and we can copy and paste all of this. And I say being a bit cheeky, but there's not really any shame in copying and pasting. Um, if, especially if you know how it works and you want to improve on it or you know, if it if it does the job, you don't need to invent the wheel. That's what you got to remember. You don't always need to rewrite things. So we put this script in. And before we go ahead and talk about it too much, let's just go ahead and play. And we'll notice, yeah, it works just fine, just as we'd expect, really. And 
You might also notice with this script is that we can jump up and down using the W keys and we, the up arrow, we can move left and right with the arrows. Uh, so this one actually has more going on. Why is that? Well, if we go into the script here, uh, let's talk about how this works. So to find some variables first, play a variable. Yeah, we're familiar with that. Run service. You might remember this from the camera script where we use the run service and we use the dot stepped event and then use this uh, function with it. Um, we're actually going to talk about that later in a minute. But first off, let's continue with this one. And then finally, context action service. This is a service that we can use to access key presses. Then uh, there's these main functions here. There's an on left function, an on right function, and an on jump function. And these simply are checking that if the button has been pressed, then jump. And when it's not being pressed anymore, stop jumping. The same here. If it's being pressed, then right value equals one, otherwise equals zero. And these functions are called in uh, usage with context action service. And it binds an action such as the uh, left on the keypad or the A key. Uh, you'll notice here they've used A in uh, quotes, but we could actually replace this if we wanted. We could put enum.keycode.a and that would work exactly the same. In fact, let's do that. Let's swap them out and put D and swap that out and put W. If we go back and play again, you'll notice it's hopefully, yes, it works exactly the same. So what else shall we talk about? Yes, run service. So instead of using uh, run service dot step, it actually uses um, a bind to render step. So I think this is a little bit more precise. Um, it's designed specifically for input. It has a render priority of input. And then on every step, um, it calls this function on update, which then checks if the humanoid is there, if it should be jumping based on this value that's set on the jump function. And then it attempts to move the character, player.character.humanoid move. And then it gives a vector three, which is simply an X, Y, and Z value. And in this case, it's only an X value that needs to be given. And that's based on the left and right values that we see that we saw here defined in these two functions. So hopefully you can get an idea of how the script works. It's quite easy to understand. Well, I hope so anyway. So what can we change with this one? Well, in fact, we don't really need to change much. It works perfectly to our needs. However, there's a few things we could use in it to help our camera script over here. So instead of using this stepped function, how about we use this bind to render step? So we'll copy and paste. Well, in fact, we'll copy and paste the bind to render step line and the on update function it calls. And we'll paste that down here. So we've got uh, run service referencing that. I have just added the, uh, got the variable there. Um, and you see it gives a render priority of input. Well, we don't want input anymore. We want camera.value instead. And instead of control, uh, again, this is just the name of it. So we could call it, call it anything we like. If we wanted, we could call it uh, foobar, but we'll call it camera, does that make sense? And that's gonna call the on update function. Now you also notice it uh, checks on the function if player.character and player.character find first child humanoid exists because it needs to check they exist before it's gonna attempt to move the humanoid here. And that's a good idea, a good check that we should probably have in our camera script. So because we don't use humanoid, but we use humanoid root part to calculate the position. So let's pop the humanoid root part in there. And then instead of these lines about moving, let's simply put in our camera line from above. And now we can comment. We could delete it, but we'll comment it out for now and pop up there. And then hopefully this should work here. So it's using the run service. 
binding to render step. It's using the render priority for our camera and it's going to call this on update function, which is actually using the same line as we had up here. But we've also got this extra check to check that the player, its character and the humanoid root bar exists before it does anything. So if we go ahead and we play now, hopefully it's going to be a little bit smoother. And also if we try and walk off the map here, you'll notice the player is comfortably in the middle of the screen and we get no errors down below. Because you may have noticed before, if we go back to the old one for a second, and we comment this out, when we uh, walked off the edge, for example, it started to judder a lot, and we got all these errors down at the bottom because humanoid root bar didn't exist anymore. So now we've fixed that, and we could actually go ahead and delete this if we wanted. And we've got this on update function that's going to handle all of that for us. We've got our control script sorted. Um, so you notice it also takes um, aspect of all the, the A key, the left key, and also D-pad left if using gamepad, which is quite handy. So it's going to work for multiple platforms. Uh, the true here tells it to add in a button if it's on like a touchscreen device. So that means that's also covered. Um, but if, say, we only wanted you to use the WASD keys, we could make that false, and then we could get rid of the key code left and the D-pad left, if we so chose. So this is a bit easier to edit. Hopefully you understand how this one works. Uh, we've now got a working camera and working movements. And finally, now, in the next episode, we can get on to controlling some of the game mechanics. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.